Hi, it's Martin again. In this video, I'm going to talk about a camera that I use uh, quite a lot. Uh, it's uh, different to some of the other videos, as this is a large format uh, pin hole camera. Before I show you the camera, uh, just to remind people, if you are interested in pin hole photography, on the 26th of April, it's World Pinhole Day. It's been slightly altered this year due to the coronavirus, but I'm sure if you go on the website, you'll find all the details there. On a more personal note, uh, and still to do with pinhole photography, I was contacted about six weeks ago by the deputy editor of the Amateur Photographer magazine, who had seen some of my pinhole photographs and said they would like to do uh, an article um, on my pinhole work uh, before the World Pinhole Day. So I've done an interview with them, um, sent them some photographs, and the article is being published on the uh, 14th of April so you'll be able to go out and buy buy the uh, magazine and see see the article that's uh, been written uh, about my work it's more of a, a question and answer they've asked asked me certain questions and uh, I've given answers to that so again if you're interested in pinhole photography go buy the amateur photographer magazine uh, that comes out uh, on the 14th of April so let's take a look at the camera in question and it's the 045 uh, pinhole camera. This camera comes in sections. In theory you can buy as many sections as you as you want but uh, I think it's primarily designed to be used with uh, three sections and the sections look like something like this. They're all identical. The only one that's different is the 25 uh, millimeter uh, panel because that has the disc with the pinholes uh, uh, placed inside it and as you can see you can see them in gold we have three pinholes to represent the three uh, uh, pinhole sizes required for each panel uh, you can see that uh, the manufacturers zero image have put some little index dots uh, on each uh, pinhole to let you know what size they are so uh, two dots would equal 75 millimeter one dot will equal 50 and no dot uh, at the top of the pinhole uh, would be 25 millimeter. As you see, as you can see, I've I've wrote that down just for my own reference. So if we were using the 25 millimeter panel, we'd just move the disc round to where there's no dots at the top, and line it up with a little mark that I've put up. Uh, if you can just see that there, and that keeps it dead center uh, on the front of the camera. So just line that up and then if we look at the front of the camera the pinholes dead centre in there. The um, focal length of 25mm because this uses a 4x5 sheet film is extreme wide angle. You would not believe how much you get in with this, uh, with this size pinhole at 25mm. And how close you can actually get to things you can get within millimeters um, and and uh, this camera will capture it the only thing that it does do it does create quite heavy venetting around the edges which is to be expected uh, because of the angle of view but under certain circumstances if you pick the right subjects it can produce some really uh, nice images um, you'll see some of those uh, at the end of the video i'll just run, uh, run run through some pictures that i've taken with it so that's at the 25 millimeter setting. Now, if I wanted to go to 50 millimeter, I would alter the pinhole on the disc. And as we said, one dot equals 50, 50 millimeter. So I just swing that round and bring that up to 50 millimeter and then place the extension panel on top. Oops, goes that way. So that's now 50 millimeter and that again is is wide very wide angle but n nowhere near as, as wide as the 25 millimeter oh by the way the f-stop on the on the 25 millimeter uh, uh pinhole is uh f138 on the 50 it's f176 and on the next panel which will make it 75 millimeter is f um f216 and again, if we use the three panels, I'd have to move the pinhole again on the disc, 
to, to the two dots which equals uh, uh, 75 millimeter now 75 millimeter is wide but it gives a more normal look to the pictures it's not as extreme to fasten the panels together they've come up with a quite a unique idea and that's uh, you just use elastic bands so there's no fancy catches to break on the camera uh, the only thing that can break is the elastic bands which are peanuts to replace and you just fasten them together like that and then to take a picture you would put in the uh, standard 4x5 uh, film holder let's put that dark slide back in slip it onto the camera and again with elastic bands just um, fasten all the top to hold it in place never had a light leak with this camera ever so it's uh, very well constructed uh, take your exposure reading uh, pull your dark side out open your shutter for the desired time and then let go you can, you can do it that way as well push it closed or uh, I opted for the um, the uh, cable release adapter a cable release uh, screws into there and rather than using this manually you just press the cable release like a con on a conventional camera and take the exposure I'll just show you one other thing with this camera um, just take this Hold her off. Uh, regarding filters, this is how I work with these cameras with filters. I often use a, an orange filter uh, for pinhole work. I just like the the look it gives. Uh, on this camera, this is a zero two thousand pinhole camera. You can buy this, which I've done as an extra. It's this wooden panel with a filter uh, with no glassing. It's fifty two millimeter size. And, and you can put filters into that, such if you're using black and white, yellow, red, orange. Uh, for colour, you can use different other filters for effect. Uh, you could do the same with this camera, but uh, I don't think it's an expense to go to if you have square filters. Now, I've got square filters, uh, especially for black and white work, and I simply put a little bit of blue tack uh, on the filter, on the underside of the filter, and and then just make sure it sticks just pressing down and then it's covering the pinhole so you get the effect of the orange filter it won't fall out all the uh, panels come with obviously the brass uh, connections for putting the elastic bands on but they all come with um, um, tripod sockets standard size that's for portrait and that's uh, sorry that's for portrait and that's for landscape view as I say they all the panels have them so the very well well built uh, camera uh, beautiful hardwood beautifully finished brass fittings nothing's going to rust and a camera like this uh, is going to last you a li lifetime the only things as I say that can break and do break are the elastic bands but uh, as I say they're they're uh, very cheap to replace. Just carry a, a bag of elastic bands with you when you go out with the camera. As regards metering, um, using pin or cameras, I'm probably better showing you on the uh, Zero 2000. This is a 120 uh, roll film uh, pin or camera. Uh, this has an f-stop of f138. So if you're using a handle light meter to take the reading, You'll find that the uh, the light meter won't go down to the small sizes that the um, the pinhole size the pinhole produces. So, like uh, on the zero four five, if you've got the three panels together, um, that would be uh, seventy five millimeter. The f-stop is two hundred sixteen. Uh, Fifty millimeter, it's a hundred f one hundred seventy six, and uh, twenty five millimeter is the same as this uh, one hundred thirty eight. So the best way is to meter using a handheld light meter and, and metering at f22 and then extrapolating those figures down to the required f-stop size. Uh, to, just to give you an idea, if we look at this uh, scale on the back of the 0-2000, um, 
Say I've metered it at F22 and it's come up with a, a quarter of a second. I have to go down now to F138, which is the size of this camera's pinhole. And that, that is there, I don't know if you can see that. And that's telling me I need eight seconds. But that exposure wouldn't be correct at eight seconds because we have uh, film's reciprocity failure to take into account. And the best way to calculate that is to use an app called uh, Reciprocity Timer. That will give you all the times for all films. And uh, you could use uh, another app called uh, Pin All Assist. That'll, that will also give you all the calculations you need. Or you could make out a chart like I've done for the 045, which gives me the, the actual exposure times, F22. And that's these charts uh, that you see now. These were made by a friend of mine, uh, Ian Barber, for me. So each focal length, um, 25, 50 and 75, I, I meet at F22, look down the scale, look across from, from the meter time to the actual f-stop uh, time and that's that's the exposure I need and then I'd go into the reciprocity timer to find out uh, what total exposure time I need. So that's the best way to, uh, to, um, to, to meter uh, with a pinhole camera. So that's the 045. And as I said uh, previously, if you um, buy one of these, I would certainly buy one with all the panels together rather than buy them separately, which works out quite expensive. So that's about it. Um, remember again, it's World Pinhole Day on uh, 26th of April. And um, also uh, buy the Amateur Photographer magazine uh, on the 14th of April and see uh, an article about my pinhole work in there. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll show you some pictures taken uh, with this camera.